Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my vegetable garden. As I mentioned in my previous video, it has been very smoky here in Spokane, Washington. Fortunately, the conditions are better. They're not perfect, but they're better this week. So what's the topic for today? I'm going to talk about harvesting winter squash and pumpkins. I'm going to tell you how to know when they're ripe and a very important step that you definitely want to do so they'll last in storage far longer than you thought possible. Now before I move on, I wanted to mention that I am in hardiness zone 5B. We typically get our first frost sometime between the middle of September and the end of the month. And we do have some rather cool temperatures next week, so this is a great time for me to check and hopefully harvest the majority of the winter squash and pumpkins. I thought I'd start with some of the Goldilocks acorn squash. You can see that these are golden in color, which is awfully pretty, and also they are a bush form, although you can see the plants are looking pretty done for the year. This is the second year I've grown Goldilocks. It's an All-America Selections winner, which means that it was given awards for its performance in the garden. I really like how they're not a vining form of squash. That has worked out really well. And I'll tell you what, when you roast these in the oven, they are amazing. So let's look at a couple of things on the plants so that you know what you're looking for. So the first thing you want to look at is the color of the stem. Ordinarily, these are a dark green, but you'll notice this one has turned sort of a golden brown. The next thing I want to look at, or actually do, is what I call the thumbnail test. And basically what you do is you try to press your thumbnail into the outer skin to see if you can cut into it with your nail. If it does not cut, that means it is ripe and ready to go. Now this one, it did let my thumbnail go in just a little bit, so I probably will have to wait a bit in order to harvest them. Hopefully not too long. Now winter squash and pumpkins can handle a light frost, but for the most part you don't want them to get very frosted because that can impact their storage life. When you do harvest a winter squash or pumpkin, you always want to leave anywhere from one to three inches of stem attached to the squash. If you either purposefully knock off the stem thinking it's just going to be in the way or you accidentally knock it off. What happens is in this area of the squash or pumpkin, rot can develop because it's kind of an open exposed area like a wound. So it's ideal not to knock them off. If you do that by accident, just remember that you should use this particular squash first rather than hoping that it will make it through a nice storage life because probably what will happen is you'll get some mold going on. Now the interesting thing that happened with this one is that I pressed into the skin and my thumbnail did not break through it at all. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest this one, leaving a stem, and there we are. How cool is that? I'm going to set that aside for now. And I'm going to test all of the squash in this bed and a neighboring bed where I have more of them growing. Things are looking good. Now, even though this one has a little green on it, it passed the thumbnail test, plus its stem is a pale yellow, and so I decided to go ahead and pick it. Well, as you can see, Goldilocks is pretty darn productive. So I ended up with 18 squash so far from a total of seven plants, and I'm leaving four to grow a few more days, and hopefully they'll be ripe before we get our first frost. 
Now let's take a look at the rest of the winter squash and pumpkins. And one of the things I haven't mentioned yet is the importance of looking at the color of the fruit. If this is the first year for you growing a particular variety, take a look at the seed packet to see what the photo looks like because they're always going to show you what the mature version looks like, right? In this case, this is a potimarone squash and I know that they normally are a little bit redder, like a burnt orange color. And this one is still a little pale, so I'm not too sure. I'm going to put it through the thumbnail test because that'll be the dead giveaway. With those Goldilocks acorn squash, it was easy to know that they were close to being ripe or ripe because they were that deep, bright gold color. So let's just go through these one by one and we'll see what we've got. Okay, thumbnail test. Uh, it does cut through. Do you see that there? So I'm going to let it grow longer. Okay, I just got a perfectly ripe Potimarone winter squash. Do you see how this is a deeper color than the one I showed you earlier? And these are fantastic when you roast them in the oven. Oh, yum, I can't wait. How about this pumpkin? That does not cut through. And also see how it's kind of a golden, almost brown stem? That definitely is a giveaway. And I'm leaving on the stem. Nice. Now, if you're thinking, boy, she sure grows dinky little pumpkins, this is actually the size it's supposed to be. So this is what is known as a sugar or pie pumpkin. Excellent for using in pumpkin pies casseroles, roasted in the oven, and so on. The variety is spooky, and this is a perfect size. Things are coming along nicely so far. I think I'd better empty this wheelbarrow because I certainly don't want to keep stacking the winter squash and pumpkins in here and risk damaging some of them by knocking off their stems. So let's do that first. Well, I'm liking the harvest so far. Now let's look at something that might seem a little more challenging for knowing when to harvest it. Do you see this squash here? This one is autumn frost, and it is definitely one of the best winter squash I have ever grown. But you'll notice that pale skin. So we're going to have to go back to the basics for knowing if this is ripe or not. We can't go by the color, that's for sure. So let's do the thumbnail test. It's definitely resistant to the thumbnail going through, and I also notice that the stem is paler in color. So I would say, yes, this is ripe. That's a heavy squash. You'll also notice there's some white near the bottom of the skin. That is not a problem, so don't worry about it. It's not like it's powdery mildew or anything. It just does that automatically. Unfortunately, I still have a few autumn frost squash that are dark green. I would assume that means that it bloomed later, got pollinated, started developing, and I'm pretty sure that this is not going to mature by the end of our growing season. But you never know, maybe we'll get a little bit of a warm period and it will finish maturing. So, you know, hope springs eternal. I'm just gonna leave the green squash on the vines and we'll see what happens. And it could be a Halloween decoration, so there we go. Okay, here is the rest of what I harvested, and I'm so tickled that I got more autumn frost this year because last year was a bit of a dud in that department. I have a few more winter squash and a couple of pumpkins that might make it before we get some frost. My fingers are crossed, and I'm just going to have to play it by ear, but I'm hoping the weather will be nice to us. Now let me share the all-important tip about curing your squash before you put them into storage because they will keep so long for you, which is awesome. Now that you've harvested your winter squash and pumpkins, you need to cure them. Are they sick? No, but curing refers to a two-week process where you move them to somewhere that is warm, light, and protected from the weather, so mostly from frost or rain. And what happens is that that skin really hardens off so that they will keep in storage for longer than you thought was even possible. It is an amazing process. Now, I cannot take credit for it. A very good friend of ours 
mentioned this quite a few years ago and it's been one of the best tips I've ever been given so I wanted to give it to you. So I'm using my greenhouse because it is warm, it's protected from the weather, and it's light. I realize not everybody has a greenhouse. You could use a sunny porch or maybe a carport that does get some light during the day off and on. So that would be a good start. Now when you move them into storage, you're looking for somewhere that is somewhat cool and dark. We use our basement because it is a steady 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and that has worked beautifully for us. But you could actually put them into the bottom of a closet, let's say, somewhere that is a bit cool and dark. Now you might notice that it's a bit wild and woolly inside of our greenhouse, and that's because Bill is growing sweet potatoes in pots in here, and the vines have gone nuts. So we are hoping to harvest them pretty soon, and I definitely will do a video on that. But in the meantime, I'm using part of my planter benches for the curing of these squash and pumpkins. I've just got some sheets of newspaper down, and I'm leaving a little bit of space between each one, just on the off chance that if one develops some rotting, it wouldn't spread quickly. And that is all there is to it just two weeks, it's totally worth it. Well, I hope you found today's video helpful. Now you know exactly when to harvest your winter squash and pumpkins, and you know the all-important rule of curing your winter squash and pumpkins for two weeks before you put them into storage. It will be a life changer, let me tell you. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week. I hope you have an abundant harvest.